Hi guys, Steve Dean from Titanium Functional Movements. For this video today, um, this is going to be directed at one of my followers, Sorel Cohen. Uh, I hope I pronounced your name right. He asked me to possibly do an instructional video based on a recent montage that I did with the battle ropes. So I've only just recently started using the battle ropes myself. Um, they have been around in the fitness industry for a long time. You'll find them obviously regularly put into boot camps. The way I personally find I get better effect from the ropes is to deviate from what you possibly see most on a lot of the boot camp exercises where you get a, a fast flailing of the arms. Um, not saying that that's not going to be a, a great exercise in itself. If you want to obviously build a bit of endurance through your body, say if you're a boxer, um, any sort of just general fatigue sensation going through the body, you will obviously get a sweat on doing that particular exercise. But I find it's a little bit limited in its approach to integrating the whole body. So what I try and do through my training and with my clients is to integrate the body as a whole as much as I can. So to do this, we need to obviously incorporate getting the gluteal function going, the posterior chain muscles, hamstrings, trying to challenge the actual posture in a more three-dimensional aspect rather than just being in a static hold and going as fast as I can with my arms. Okay? So please, this isn't trying for me to be negative about people doing the exercises previously, which, as I said, will work to a certain level, but can be a little bit limited. So I've got the battle ropes set beside me. Two exercises that I'll cover. The basic hinge slam. So I'm gonna go into a, a squat type motion, a bit more like a functional squat, where we just hinge to a certain depth. We're not looking to drop uh, too much load through the quads as we do this and take our um, backsides towards the floor. We're actually gonna try and reach for more for activation through the gluteal muscles and like I said the hamstrings so the posterior chain in particular taking hold of the ropes each rope um, obviously it's looped through averages roughly around seven kilo per rope what I will say on the ropes is to get away from over fatiguing of the arms and shoulders you want to try and generate a more relaxed sensation through the upper body Okay, the power generated is going to, should be initiated through the gluteal muscles and through your core function. So if you're used to doing pendulum swings, kettlebells, and doing them correctly, then you'll understand what I mean by hinging and correctly applying the leverage and power where we need it most and not just muscling it through the arms. So best tip I can give for that one is once you pull the, the ropes nice and straight and you get a bit of tension, Take one step inside of the rope so the handles will come just towards the size of your hips. You're then going to take up that hinge position, ensuring that the navel will be retracted to keep constant core stimulus through the TVA. And I just want you to, at first, just get used to a little moderate hinge. So go into flexion at the hip and then extension at the hip. And you're just going to allow the ropes to pick up together and then just drop to the floor. So I'm not overly pushing pressure through the upper body, through the arms, and I'm trying to generate the initiation of force through these gluteal muscles and not hyperextend through the lumbar region, which will then cause a lot of lower back fatiguing. If you do find that you get a lot of lower back aching through this exercise, just moderate where you're actually applying leverage from. It could be a fascial issue where you need to do some myofascial release and some um, stretching afterwards just to try and alleviate some tightness in the tissues. Or it could just be simple biomechanical failure or maybe core failure. So be very aware of the signals that you're getting back through the body in that you want to feel the correct musculature work in the correct order through the kinetic chain. So once again, pull the ropes tight. Take one step in, into that hinge position, pull that core in nice and tight, keep that spine nice and neutral, and then just generate hip extension and flexion. Obviously from this stage, 
then you can start applying a little bit more rhythm, a little bit more force. But it should be more of an effortless power rather than a powerless effort where you're trying to slam all day long. Think of a pendulum swing coming up, maybe a bit of a slam coming down in conjunction with dropping the hip back. So we hinge, up and down. So I'm feeling nothing in the lower back. Gluteal function is firing, so I can feel activation straight away through the higher portions of the hamstring in towards the glutes. My core obviously is trying to maintain my structure to make sure I'm not lateral flexing or deviating in one way or the other. And I've got no fatigue whatsoever through the arms. The only fatigue you might feel through the upper body other than the core could be through the lats as you pull through the extension phase. But again, err on, err on the side of caution where you're not trying to <coughs> muscle too much power through it. Next exercise is fairly similar, except we're gonna go into the frontal plane. So we're gonna move side to side on our lateral. Okay, so for this one, again, take the ropes, and you're gonna go into a unilateral stance. So obviously one leg in front of the other. The same rules apply. It all comes from the hip hinge initially. So we drop the hinge back, trying to load about 90% load on the leading leg, only about 10% maximal on the uh, back leg. So it's just there for balance, just to shop, stop any unnecessary shifting of the hips. Core again is engaged, same rules for the upper body. Don't try and rush this one because you will find that the rhythm will go. It's more about excellent execution of each repetition rather than trying to build up too much pace at the start. So from there, same again, ropes are tight, stand slightly inward of the ropes, hinge, I'm gonna push across, and then down, push across, check your alignment, make sure the knee is over the ankle, body weight should be positioned more into the heel, scapula's retracted, neutral spine, and across. Okay guys, so I'm gonna take this into a more dynamic real-time version where I put it into a bit of a circuit. Okay guys, I hope you found this video useful and informative, uh, in particular Sorel, I uh, hope um, this answers a few questions and gives you an insight as to how to progress yourself with this piece of equipment. Uh, I will be putting some more videos up, if you want any more um, ideas with the battle ropes, I have got this montage video already up on my YouTube and my Facebook page, so if you could click a like or subscribe to that, it would be greatly appreciated. I will be doing more videos, instructional ones, based around exercises very soon. I just wanted to uh, put this one out there for Sorel. Please progress yourselves intelligently. These ropes um, can injure quite easily if your mechanics aren't down. So if you struggle with your basic movements of hip hinge, squat, uh, maintaining constant core function through those ranges of motion, um, if you hold too much tension or have any sort of shoulder injury, then please refrain from using these at the start and build yourself a good foundation before you get to this stage. This is your end game. This is your, this is your dynamic stage of your training where you can put things together as a circuit and really feel the benefits of freedom through the musculature and real athleticism through the musculature. Um, it's achievable by anyone, okay? So... Till next time, this is Steve Dean for Titanium Functional Movements. Take care.